everyone it's Lou Collins thank you for joining me I'm going to be showing you this beautiful card today I absolutely love using this technique for colouring in a gorgeous background and this floral dye is perfect for this so this is from my brand new opulence collection from textures it's now available at craft stash exclusively I'll make sure it's linked down below for you so this is the decorative floral outline and as you can see it's kind of like, like uh, peonies and leaves it's just so pretty but rather than giving you the full solid flower I've given you the outlines that means you're free to then color in those flowers as you wish so I'm now going to um, cut this from twice actually I'm going to cut it first of all from white cardstock and that's going to go onto my card base um, the card base is um, it's just a little bit slimmer than five by seven and I'm going to have it as a horizontal card base I think I often change my mind about these things halfway through um, but because I'm going to be using watercolours today, I'm going to be using a separate panel to do my design on and then I'm going to adhere it to the front of my card. So this has already been cut to be a little bit smaller than my card base, so I've got a slight border around the edge. So I can put my card base aside, keep that nice and clean throughout and work on this panel. Now this isn't a watercolour cardstock, it's just a simple um, solid cardstock, sort of stamping. It's smooth, it's got no texture to it. It will hold the water over okay not as well as watercolor wood but I really wanted the bright white that you get with this sort of cardstock so I'm going to use the same card to cut out this image first of all and then I'm going to cut this out again a second time from gold mirror card now I think it's important if you're thinking about purchasing a die that you can see how it cuts so I've just taken this out of my die and you can see everything's cut through absolutely beautifully. I'm going to try and keep this as clean and tidy as possible because there are a lot of bits here that are going to go all over my craft desk. So I'm going to tap this off over my waste paper bin. So from that die, there is my white version and my gold version. I mean, look how stunning these are. Aren't they beautiful? I'm going to put the gold one to the side for now and I'm going to work with the white one. So I'm going to place this onto my card and I'm going to use a scrap of paper. I'm going to spray the reverse of this with a permanent uh, spray adhesive. This, in my opinion, is the best way to get this to stick all the little details alternatively you can use glue uh, applied with a sponge or glue applied with a brayer to get onto those little areas and this needs around about 30 seconds to dry so once that's kind of dried and gone tacky we can then place this onto our card now I'm not going to use the full image but I'm going to use a good portion of it. So I think somewhere about there would be nice. I'm going to trim off the excess, press that down and make sure that all the areas, if possible, are stuck down there. I might have had a little bit of glue on there. And once dry, I've got a little bit under there. Let's just take some tweezers. I've got a tiny little bit of a die cut. Just there we go. Remove that. And the same under there, obviously had some bits on the back of the die still. There we go. Now I can trim the edges with some scissors and you can either use your fussy cutting scissors for this or you can use your big ones to get a nice straight line. Now, in my opinion, that looks stunning as it is. Just as it is, don't need to do anything else. It looks like it's embossed. And of course you can absolutely leave it like that if you wish. But we're not going to be leaving it like this. What we're going to do is spritz over this with water. We're going to apply a couple of drops of watercolour ink. Now I've got, this one's from a Papercraft Society box, this one's from a Creative Craft Products. I've got some watercolour inks here. These are really highly saturated, so I only need a little drop of each. I'm going to go with the blue as well and I know that this blue and this green together if I mix them I get a really nice turquoise I'm just going to spritz my brush as well and a little bit of water into each let's start with this peony and I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of ink and I'm just going to drop it onto the base of each of the petals and just watch and see how that blends itself out some you're going to need more ink some less and 
and it doesn't matter if you're touching the um what do you call it the white outline that's what it's there for and that's why we've cut the gold version because with the gold one we can then cover up any areas so I'm not looking for this entire flower to be blue what I'd like to happen is for some of it to be white so just the base of each of the petals to be blue you see I put a little bit extra on there a little bit more there a little tinge of blue to some of them and there we go I think I've captured all of it now I can leave it like that I'm going to give it a very light mist of water just to help it kind of just move around a little bit more as it dries now I'm going to do exactly the same with the other peony so there's a bud here just a little bit in there um, and I've got another one here if you're not sure on uh, how your flowers the positions which ones are leaves and which ones are petals and such you can take a look at the image on the front and you should be able to then see which spaces are which especially once you've cut into the image it is a little bit harder to then see like I say which is petals and which is leaves if you find your uh, flowers drying and your ink is not sort of wicking into the petals as much as it was just a little bit more of a spritz of water will do the trick there we go I'm pretty sure that is all of the flowers done now so I am going to clean up my brush and then I'm going to do the same with the green the trick here is not to overwork the picture or the image because to be honest that is going to do a lot of work itself it's going to move around as it dries once you're happy with everything and you're happy with the position of all the ink and the colour, you can heat set this to speed up the drying. I just realised I've missed a bit, so I'm just going to pick up a bit of green ink. I missed that green stem. That definitely needs to be there, like so. There we go. I think that's probably... So now this is completely dry and a very happy accident did happen. My brush must have had a little bit of gold paint in. So I've ended up with some gold just in the center of the petals. Like I say, complete accident there, but you can add gold mica to your paints or your watercolors if you wish. Now, like I say, that looks a little bit abstract at the moment. We haven't got clear defined lines, but that first white die cut we put down, that's just held the color in the correct places, ready for the gold one to go on top. So let's now go back and spray the back of this one in the same way as we did the first one and then place that over the top to reveal the most beautiful image. Again, ensure this has about 30 seconds to sort of set almost and go tacky before you stick it down um, and you can use alternative glues and adhesives if you wish and this does have to be very dry otherwise it's just not going to stick but now we can place this over the top it doesn't matter where you start just try not to press anything down until you're sure it's in the perfect place so I'm just working my way around the image bit by bit Hopefully when I put the first one down, I didn't stretch it and it all went down where it should have. And there we go. Gorgeous. Now again, as long as that's all stuck to the edges, I can trim those edges. I'm going to use some finer, more detailed scissors here to make sure I get these absolutely perfect. Now part of the image that I've cut off from here, I've just had a go sticking that at the top. Uh, this adhesive is still a bit tacky so it is at the moment removable but within a minute or two that will no longer be removable so I'm just going to trim this down and see what it's going to look like up there uh, I don't need to paint this one because the other one could be the focal point but yeah I think that's pretty nice I think that's lovely I'm going to leave that up there so now we can place this onto our card base and I'm going to put that on with foam pads so looking at the back of our panel, this is the reason I worked on the panel and not directly onto the card base because ink, watercolours, they will all soak through. 
they will go onto the reverse of your card and if you're onto a card base there's no way you're going to keep that card base really clean and pristine on the inside as well as on the back how beautiful is this now this is one of those cards that doesn't need a really big sentiment on it i want the flower to be the focal point i don't want anything to detract from that so i think something small from my sentiments for all paper pack just a little black sentiment down the bottom here somewhere will be more than enough so there we have a really beautiful card coloured in really nicely loose watercolour colouring in no stress no pressure no need to be an artist whatsoever just following the steps in this video so thank you for joining me everybody if you want to see more from the textures opulence collection i've got lots of tutorials currently uploading onto my channel some of them are already and some are coming in the next few days and weeks so please make sure you've subscribed to the channel and i think you're also going to absolutely love this tutorial here using the same die. Take care everybody, I'm going to see you very very soon.